I posted before about my sister and her husband pranking me relentlessly while we were camping together, and I bought a cab over camper that kept me safe from their shenanigans. I used to not like camping much, but since getting the camper, I've enjoyed it quite well. I had solar panels installed on it and put in a small TV that I play retro video games on. My nephews love the camper too. So much that even my sister and brother-in-law begrudgingly gave up tents last year because of how much their kids said they didn't want to sleep in tents anymore. I guess you could say they were the last in the group to do so. Rather than a cab over, they got a camper trailer since they have an SUV. Their friends all got campers before them too. Pretty much every single person who was in the yearly tent camping friend group now have campers of varying sorts. It ended up being like a keep up with the Joneses mentality. I got a camper, and then someone else did. And then someone else after that. And now it's all of them. I guess you could say it's more like we're all glamping now. But we love it. Until we hear one of the campers rocking at night anyway. That's when the earplugs come in handy. Even my mother, who previously hated camping and had forced me to go all those times just to babysit the drunks, now has a camper. She got a little one-person teardrop camper that tows behind her Subaru with ease. And she loves a quiet night laying in it and reading her favorite books. She mainly comes along for the sake of my nephews though. Because she kept putting it on me before, and I called her out for it. My sister was initially a bit of a witch about the situation though. She had some sort of crazy idea that she was in charge when we went camping. And my BIL just went along with it. To which I called him a tool. Well once the camper craze hit... The following summer it was half campers, half tents. And my sister told me it was all my fault that things had changed. I told her to stop acting like she was half her age and move on. Besides, this only started because I just wanted peace and had to buy a camper just to get it. Had they respected me instead of treating me like a target, maybe things would still be as they were. She tried to argue further, but I threatened to make a spectacle of the situation if she didn't let it go. Later I heard it was quite a scuffle between my sister and B.I.L. when he finally said they needed a camper too. Boy do I wish I could have been a fly on the wall for that. But it worked, because now they have a small camper trailer. An 80s model I think. B.I.L. bought it with some damage and fixed it up himself. Though unlike me, they don't allow video game systems in their camper. So the kids come to me a lot. Near the end of last July... My sister asked me to set aside time off work to go on one more camping trip in early September before school started for her kids. And I agreed, albeit reminding her that I wanted no pranks done to me. And she made it pretty clear she was still unhappy I'm a spoil sport about it. But what could she do? It didn't end well for her after making my last post. None of the people in the group have tried to mess with me while trying to reclaim their frat youth since they were called out as bullies two years ago. Funny thing is, having campers now is actually making them act a bit more their age when they drink. And I'm pleased to say I haven't seen any of them so crazy that they're running around in their underwear and yelling out random nonsense anymore. But they still say and do stupid shit. And while I don't enjoy those shenanigans, I do like the drinking games, the campfires, the barbecue, the marshmallows, etc. It's a nice escape from from my home life. It was getting chilly early last year in our area with fall making its way in a little sooner than expected. So the last few days before school started, we had mild rain and temps in the mid-60s during the day, and even colder at night. Fine with me, I have a propane buddy heater. So I wasn't cold. But bragging about the heater was what drew in a wild Karen. I'd never before met one on this level. I mostly just read about them online. But by God, she was just like the ones I've heard so much about. She didn't really have the Karen look though. She had long shoulder-length brown hair, maybe late 30s to early 40s and was a bit thick. But man did she have a mean look about her that just made me want to turn and go the other way. The campsite we went to had a small vendor store at it that sold basic supplies and some foods. I rode in on my old MTB and bought a soda. I'd met another guy while out riding on the trails, and he had a crazy bike made out of a vintage beach cruiser I learned was called a clunker. He was very specific it was spelled with a K. And he told me he builds clunkers for fun out of his garage and gives them away. We were having fun talking about bikes, but then we started feeling the soft patter of rain, and the evening chills were coming in. The guy I rode with said it was going to suck sleeping that night since he was camping in the canopy of his truck. I remarked I'd be warm because I have a portable propane heater, and how I just need to turn it on for an hour before bed and I sleep nice and toasty. Then some lady I'd never met before stepped in front of us and asked me about my heater. I quickly described what it was, how much it was, and where to get one before moving along. But this woman started following me. 
I locked my bike and then ended up face to face with this lady like when Victor turned and was face to face with the corpse bride. She was suddenly asking to borrow my heater and coming closer at the same time. I got really awkward and tried to get her to let it go. But being polite got me nowhere. The lady kept stepping in front of me and was whining about how it was colder and wetter than expected. And she and her kids couldn't go home for two more days. I just told her sorry and ran around her to my camper. But she kept following and was berating me that I have no compassion for a mother. Inside the camper, my two nephews were in there playing Mario Kart Double Dash on a GameCube I'd brought, and the woman instantly became furious about my setup. She refused to let me close the door and yelled that I might as well just be at home if this was the kind of camping I'm doing. Then she actually tried to force her way in while yelling something about me being entitled, and had it too good while her kids didn't hardly have anything. I blocked the way in and nearly shoved her out with my foot. Now enter my mother. She's a bit of a Karen in her own right, but most definitely a mama bear too. She saw enough of what happened to interject before I got the chance to push the lady out. My mother yelled at her to get away from her son and grandbabies. The two of them had an epic screaming match that my sister soon joined in on, until a few more people in our camping group showed up and began laying into that lady too. Realizing how outnumbered she was, the Karen took off. She didn't bother us again. And one of the guys in our camping group was kinda upset by that because he was keeping a super soaker loaded and ready in case she did come back. I did see the Karen a couple more times around the area, but she avoided eye contact. I did see her campsite while riding my bike, and she had an okay looking tent, but her kids really didn't look happy. I don't know what her story was, or why she was stuck there. Maybe she was temporarily without residence, or something. I don't know but I do know that she went way too far before when trying to get into my camper. Her problems weren't mine to solve. Sadly, I didn't notice till right as we were all packing up to leave, but the tires on my bike had been slashed. I couldn't prove it was the Karen, but I'm pretty sure it was her. I fixed the bike easily enough. Just needed new tubes and tires. But I was still mad. R.I.P. that bike though, because my neighbor's son who just got his driver's license ran it over last November. It was old anyway. My B.I.O. gave me his old MTB to replace it, and I saved the new tires I bought for my old one to put on it. I waited all this time since the incident to post because I figured my sister would go looking here right away. Don't know whether she did or not. But it's here now. Story 2. Small Town Drama Incident This happened about four years ago, and now that my mom is no longer at her current job I feel I can post about this incident. To give you some of a background, I live in a somewhat small town. My family has lived here for years. It is one of those towns where growing up I had to be on my best behavior because everyone knows everyone. One time I was picked up by some friends who were egging before picking me up and by the time I got home my mom had already had three phone calls from people telling on me that I was in the car that was egging. Everyone knows everyone and everyone is related to everyone. My grandma was very involved in the community and everyone calls her grandma. My mom is also very involved in the community and I swear she knows everyone. She also was on the school board and president at the time of the event that I am about to share. So back in 2020 my grandma was renting a house from a family who has also lived in the town forever. They are actually seen as slumlords in town. Their properties they rent out are not the best. However, considering our family history and their love for my grandma they rented out one of their, better, smaller houses to her. The house was a house. We had to do a lot to it on our dime before my grandma and my grandma's brother could move in. The house had old appliances and the doors were the original in this 1950s house. So my grandma, 86 years old, became ill and it was hard for my mom, 59 years old, to get her in and out of the house due to very wet conditions. My mom honestly was having a horrible time getting her to the car. My grandma also had fallen a few times as well. There was a swamp of black slimy mud between my grandma's yard and our only available parking constantly. My mom reached out to my grandma's landlord and asked if she would provide a sidewalk or or some type of safe passage to the street. My mom was told that that was city property, and she was not allowed to do anything. So my mom reached out to the city. People who we had every reason to believe would care about the safety of my grandma, great uncle, or any other senior citizen. The city said it was a landlord problem, and she needed to put in a driveway. Just to add, a lot of the people who work for the city are people my family have known for years and have lived in the town for years themselves. My grandma babysat over half of them. When my mom kept getting the back and forth between city and landlord, and had no luck appealing to the public works committee, she finally told Bob, 
who is the head of public works she would just take care of it herself. Bob is someone who has been in town for years and is actually distantly related to the landlord. At that point, the mayor, Chelsea, ordered the city workers to set aside other projects that came from them and go to my grandma's property. Nothing was done to improve the situation. They spent the day putting in dirt, grass seed, straw, and huge boulders that made access to our only parking spot even more difficult. It was February no grass was going to grow lol. Also the mayor Chelsea is someone who we grew up with in town. She is someone who went to high school with my older cousins and is actually distantly related to my family. She was new as mayor and has kids in high school and her husband owns a business in town. She used to actually be neighbors to my aunt. She is not the brightest bulb in the tanning bed. She also is the typical mean girl. When my mom got off of work the day they put the dirt and grass seed down she called my grandma. She was crying. My grandma said that the city may as well have thrown dirt in her face because they only made the problem worse. My mom's next step was to attend the alderman meeting, provide pictures of our problem and the action taken, and ask to approve that expenditure and how did it address our problem. After being confronted publicly, the mayor said it was she who ordered the action. Then she stated that she would have the guys go look at it again. The only action taken upon their return was moving the boulder back so it wasn't so close to the street. At this point, the mayor came after my mom both personally and professionally. I feel the mayor honestly felt threatened by my mom. The mayor also wanted to show off and show she was going to put my mom in her place I guess. My mom was constantly told she should run for mayor as well. My mom worked at a pharmacy in town. The mayor and her friend who is our neighbor and my mom's old friend, I live next door to my parents, would call and complain about my mom. My mom said when they would come to the pharmacy to pick up their meds she would be completely blank and just say what she needed to say and check them out. In the meantime it was election time and the mayor was up for re-election. The mayor was criticized a lot due to her lack of knowledge regarding codes, policies, and her having multiple conflicts of interest due to appointing her friends and family to committees. Also, she constantly put out posts on FB with many grammatical and spelling errors. It was embarrassing for our town to be honest. My mom helped her opponent campaign and helped him at the polls. The mayor then wrote some letter and sent it to everyone in town creating a rumor saying my mom was drinking at the polls when voting was going on. Me and my dad laughed so hard at this one due to my mom having a total of like five drinks in her life. Also in the letter they wrote that my mom should not be the president of the school board etc due to this rumor. The harassment at her work got so bad that my mom's boss asked if something was going on due to the same women calling and complaining about her, and he thought it was odd because he did not see anything wrong with what she was doing and my mom had never had a complaint before then all of the sudden these women were calling constantly. They were even calling the pharmacy's corporate offices. My mom was so upset about it they were ruining her reputation and talking smack around town saying my mom and our family thought we would get special privileges from the city due to who we were. Our family finally fixed the problem ourselves. It required exactly $25 worth of gravel to create safe passage for my grandma. The aldermen were not aware because we really had our hands full trying to help my grandma get to an improved state of health and thought since we had contacted public works, we thought they would have been made aware through city communications. One alderman drove by while my cousin was shoveling gravel. When the alderman understood what was really being asked, he helped shovel the gravel and told my grandma he was sorry. Now, back to when they first moved in. They were granted a contingent occupancy permit due to repairs that needed to be made. It was a good thing because my grandma had been led to believe this property had already been approved and had relinquished her current apartment. However, in the eight months she has lived there, there had not been one follow-up visit to make sure any of these repairs were done so the landlord was not being forced to make repairs. There were so many repairs that needed done. For instance, repairing the back stairs that are the second way out in case of fire. Every time my mom would inquire about a follow-up visit, it was met with a threat to revoke the occupancy permit and make my ill grandma move and become homeless. We had not asked for nothing more than what my grandma and great uncle are entitled to as tenants. We were just looking out for our family. The mayor turned this into a show of power between her and my mom. I do not know why the landlord is not being made to comply. But we really know why, it is because they are related to the people who are supposed to hold the landlords accountable. We followed proper channels, we did not ask for any personal favors. Only what should be in place for all tenants, which is making sure properties are repaired when a contingent occupancy permit is granted. As far as enforcing the rules, that should have all been handled by the city occupancy permit officer, code enforcement officer, and the landlord. We should never have had to even ask. 
the mayor Chelsea ended up winning the election again. We had members of Chelsea's family going up our street at 10.30 p.m. honking their horns and screaming. We won, bitch! Our neighbor who had young children actually recorded it and posted it on FB because they were upset because it had woken up their children. To this day our family is harassed and our family members are constantly getting citations for little petty things. They cited my aunt while on hospice for her ramp they needed for her wheelchair. My aunt had to go to court while on hospice due to their harassment. Also when me and my husband were having work done to our backyard and needed permits it was a nightmare. Finally I made my husband call and resubmit permits and use only his name and the address of our property and that is when they finally pushed through our permits. I had not changed my name at the time. Talk about small town drama. This mayor is still the current mayor. Constantly, we see her breaking rules and she continues to create conflicts of interest for herself. Were we the assholes in this situation? Should we just forget it and move on? Do we have the right to be mad still?